Hello my friends and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. In this video, we explore interesting manufacturing processes that reflect the diversity of modern life today. Prominent manufacturing processes include forging, casting, machining and quarrying, producing condoms, wedding rings or simply tissue paper. The hydraulic system of a 2,000-ton free forging press is a crucial component responsible for generating and controlling the immense force required for the forging process. This robust system utilizes hydraulic power to deliver controlled and precise movements, ensuring efficient and accurate forging operations. At the heart of the hydraulic system is a high-capacity hydraulic pump, which converts mechanical energy to hy hydraulic energy. This pump supplies pressurized hydraulic fluid, typically oil, to various components throughout the system. The pressurized fluid is transmitted through a network of pipes and valves to actuate different functions. The main actuator of the system is the hydraulic cylinder, which houses a piston capable of exerting an enormous force of 2,000 tons. The piston is driven by the pressurized hydraulic fluid, converting the fluid's energy into linear motion. This motion is then transmitted to the forging dies, enabling the shaping of the workpiece. To control the movements of the hydraulic cylinder and regulate the forging process, the system incorporates various valves, such as flow control valves and pressure relief valves. These valves enable precise control over the flow rate and pressure of the hydraulic fluid, allowing for optimal forging conditions. The hydraulic system also includes a reservoir for storing hydraulic fluid, a filtration system to maintain fluid cleanliness, and a cooling system to dissipate heat generated during operation. The manufacturing process of aluminum alloy wheels begins with aluminum alloy preparation step. High-grade aluminum alloy containing 97% aluminum is used as the base material. The ingots are heated in a furnace to 750 degrees Celsius until they liquefy. The molten metal is injected from the bottom of the mold under pressure, reducing the risk of air bubbles. The molten aluminum takes approximately 7 to 10 minutes to solidify within the mold. Once solidified, the mold automatically opens, and the wheel is submerged in lukewarm water to cool it down. After heat treatment, the wheel may have rough edges due to excess metal, which are trimmed off using a computer-guided lathe. Machining inside face and outer face, the aluminum wheel is loaded onto the CNC machine. The robotic arm positions the wheel in the correct orientation, and the machining process begins. The CNC machine uses specialized tools to shape and refine the inside face and outer face of the wheel. This step ensures that the surfaces are smooth, even, and free from imperfections. Automation in the machining line for automotive aluminum wheels involves the use of CNC, computer numerical control, machines equipped with robotic arms to perform various machining operations. This automated process ensures precision, efficiency, and consistency in the production of wheels. Machining wheels edge. After the inside and outer faces have been machined, the CNC machine moves the wheel to another station where the wheel's edge is machined. This process involves removing any excess material and refining the edge to the specified measurements. The robotic arm precisely positions the wheel to ensure accurate machining. Drilling holes for lug nuts. The next step in the automation machining line is drilling holes for the lug nuts. The CNC machine, controlled by the robotic arm, uses specialized drilling tools to accurately create the required holes in the wheel. The position and depth of the holes are precisely controlled to ensure proper fitment of the lug nuts.
The wheel is tested to ensure it is airtight. Air is pumped into the wheel while it is submerged in water. If any air bubbles appear, it indicates the presence of a pinhole or shrinkage in the metal, resulting in the wheel failing inspection. The wheel undergoes an automated painting process. It receives a base coat, followed by a coat of color, which can range from classic silver or black to more vibrant shades. A clear coat is applied to protect the paint and prevent corrosion. Randomly selected wheels are subjected to performance and wear testing to ensure their quality. This step ensures that the wheels meet the required standards and can withstand regular use. The process of extracting and producing stone involves several stages, from quarrying the raw material to transforming it into finished products. The stone, known for its durability and aesthetic appeal, offers a wide range of textures, colors, and finishes. In the quarrying phase, specialized teams locate and extract stone from natural deposits. In the case of Marfilpe, they have two quarries located in important limestone exploration areas in Portugal. They prioritize minimizing environmental impacts by adopting rigorous and sustainable practices. This includes using machinery and equipment with low CO2 emissions and noise levels, as well as implementing waste reduction, recycling, and energy efficiency measures. Once the raw material is obtained, it is transported to the factory for further processing. The production process involves careful selection of the raw stone, followed by its transformation using state-of-the-art technology and reliable machines. These machines enable high production levels and allow the company to meet market demands and requirements effectively. In the city of gold, there exists a renowned manufacturer of top-quality wedding rings, August Gastner. For over a century, this family-run business has excelled in creating exquisite rings that stand the test of time. The manufacturing process begins with the careful selection of only the finest gold, silver, and alloys. These ingredients, combined with Gastner's secret recipe, contribute to the creation of first-class quality rings. The metals are melted together at temperatures exceeding 1,000 degrees in a process called alloying. The smelter ensures the even dispersion of all alloy materials, while induction heating maintains a continuous circulation of the liquid gold. Once the liquid gold alloy has been adequately mixed, it is poured evenly into a mold and allowed to cool. This solidifies the alloy, forming a bar of gold alloy which serves as the heart and resistant raw material of the future wedding ring. The bar undergoes rinsing with cold water to further harden it and then dries in the flame. Subsequently, the solid bar is rolled to the desired ring width enhancing its hardness. This rolling process also eliminates any minute bubbles that may have formed during casting, highlighting the exceptional quality upheld by Gastner. These ring blanks are stamped out of gold that is free from impurities, ensuring the highest level of quality. To achieve maximum hardness, the material needs to be widened, and this is where the mandrel comes into play. The mandrel helps adjust the ring to the desired size, although it's a challenging task due to the extreme hardness and resistance of the gold. Once the ring blank has been prepared, it is moved to the turning lathe. Here, the blank is shaped to its required width, 
thickness, and the final shape of the annular rail. Skilled artisans use their expertise and precision to ensure that each ring meets the exact specifications and design standards. The turning lathe allows for precise shaping, creating a ring that is not only visually appealing but also comfortable to wear. To ensure the utmost precision and quality, Gastner employs the latest laser technology in creating extraordinary three-dimensional surface designs. This technology allows for long-lasting joints between multicolored gold rings. The rings are bound together using the sintering process, which takes place in a vacuum under high pressure and extreme heat. By alloying the rings, they become permanently fused. The rings are put in a crucible and compressed, melting the golden rings together to form a single, unified piece. This meticulous process, which takes approximately 10 minutes, guarantees that the rings will never break apart. Gastner's commitment to high-class quality is evident in their choice to smelt the rings together rather than simply soldering them. After the smelting process, a goldsmith carefully trims and sands any remaining irregularities to achieve a surface of absolute evenness. This ensures that the ring feels smooth and pleasant on the wearer's finger. In the case of Leda's rings, multiple brilliant cut diamonds are added to enhance their beauty. Gastner utilizes the latest CNC technology to prepare the milling and precise drilling for the diamond's final placement. The jewelry setter, equipped with high-definition microscopes, skillfully arranges the precious diamonds in the prepared frame. Gastner manufactures diamonds of the purest and highest quality, adhering strictly to UN resolutions for fair and legitimate diamond trade. The microscopes allow for accurate mounting, ensuring the diamonds are securely set. The final stage in the manufacturing process is polishing. Experienced hands meticulously polish the rings, adding a distinctive brilliance to each one. The polishing stage is crucial to achieving the desired luster and appearance. Gastner places special importance on this stage to ensure the rings are truly exceptional. Before being prepared for shipment, the finished pair of rings undergoes a thorough quality check. Multiple tests are conducted to ensure they meet the high standards set by Gastner. Only after passing these rigorous tests are the rings checked, packed, and accompanied by a certificate of quality. The manufacturing process of condoms at Manforce begins with the sourcing of latex, which is obtained from rubber plantations in Kerala and Tamil Nadu, India. The latex is harvested from rubber trees and collected in drums. Latex quarantine and testing. The drums of latex undergo a quarantine period, typically a day, to ensure that the latex is free from any impurities or contaminants. Latex compounding. The approved latex is pumped into temperature-controlled tanks. To stabilize the latex, a mixture of chemicals known as partial compounds is added. These compounds help improve the viscosity and other properties of the latex. The latex mixture is carefully monitored to ensure consistency. Latex testing. The latex is tested for various parameters such as viscosity, total solid content, and VFA, dipping process. In the dipping area, the processed latex takes the familiar shape of a condom. Borosilicate glass molds, washed and dried on an automated line, are used in the dipping process. These molds are lowered or dipped into the tanks of processed latex. The molds are then withdrawn, and the latex-coated condoms are left to dry. Beading. After dipping, 
the condoms are beaded to create a rim at the open end. This beading helps to retain the shape of the condom during subsequent processing and packaging stages. Baking. The beaded condoms are then baked in ovens. The heat helps to cure the latex and retain the desired shape of the condoms. Leach solution treatment. To soften the condoms and facilitate easy removal from the molds, they are treated with a leach solution. This solution helps in the smooth stripping of condoms from the molds. Stripping and washing. The condoms are then stripped off the molds using a high pressure water jet. This process removes the condoms from the molds and prepares them for further processing. Slurry coating. The condoms, which may be sticky after the stripping process, undergo a slurry coating. They are rolled around in a unique mix of chemicals called slurry, which helps to coat them with a powder. This powder coating prevents the condoms from sticking together and makes them easier to handle during subsequent stages. Drying. The condoms are dried in two-stage dryers. The first stage draws out excess water, while the second stage uses heat to dry the condoms fully. Proper drying is crucial to ensure the condom's integrity and prevent any moisture-related issues. Cooling. After drying, the condoms are spread out and cooled on specially designed tables. This step allows the condoms to reach room temperature and ensures they are ready for further testing and packaging. Electronic testing. The dried and cooled condoms undergo electronic testing, also known as electronic testing, ET. Each condom is placed on an electrode, and a high voltage current is passed through it. This test detects any holes or defects in the condoms. Condoms that pass the test are directed to accept crates, while those with defects are diverted to reject bins. Lubricant quantity testing. To ensure the optimum amount of lubricant is present in each condom, samples are collected after the foiling process. The samples undergo a lubricant quantity test, where the weight of a condom is measured before and after an ultrasonic bath in an alcohol-based solution. This test helps verify that the condoms contain the correct amount of lubricant. Water leak test and burst test. Random samples from the accepted crates are subjected to water leak testing and burst testing. The water leak test ensures that there are no holes or leaks in the condoms, while the burst test measures the pressure inside the condoms before they burst. These tests further ensure the quality and reliability of the condoms. After the condoms have undergone electronic testing and quality assurance checks, they proceed to the foiling area for packaging. The foiling process involves sealing the individual condoms in foil packets, which provide an additional layer of protection and ensure the condoms remain intact until use. After the condoms have undergone flavoring, they are loaded onto a conveyor belt that takes them to the foiling station. The condoms are carefully positioned on the conveyor belt to ensure accuracy during the foiling process. Flavor dosing. At the foiling station, the pre-loaded flavor solution is dosed onto the individual condoms. The machine accurately dispenses the desired amount of flavor onto each condom, ensuring consistency. Sealing in foil packets. Once the condoms have been flavored, they are sealed in foil packets. 
The foil packets provide an additional layer of protection and help maintain the condom's freshness and integrity. Each condom is individually sealed to ensure hygiene and convenience. Visual inspection. After sealing, the foil packets containing the condoms undergo a visual inspection. Matching and packaging. The matching products, including the inner boxes containing the foil sealed condoms, are manually inserted into the retail sale box. All the inner boxes are visually inspected to ensure they meet the required quality standards. Once approved, they proceed to cello wrapping, where a protective layer is applied. Outer packaging. The individually wrapped retail sale boxes are further packed into printed outer boxes. The number of inner boxes filled in each outer box depends on the specific variant being packaged. Batch numbers of the outer pack and individual products are carefully matched and randomly inspected to ensure accuracy. Actul Kajit, located in Pamukova, Sakarya, Turkey, is a prominent player in the tissue paper production industry. With a total area of 200,000 square meters, the company operates a tissue mill with a production capacity of 140,000 tons. It is the first in Turkey to utilize Viscosoft technology in its manufacturing process. The company has two paper machines that produce tissue paper from 100% virgin wood pulp. It focuses on manufacturing semi-finished products for converting facilities, catering to various specifications of toilet paper, paper towels, napkins, and handkerchiefs for private label brands. The paper production process begins with the utilization of 100% virgin wood pulp, which serves as the primary raw material. The wood pulp is carefully selected for its quality and purity, ensuring that the final tissue paper meets the highest standards. Once the wood pulp is prepared, it undergoes a series of refining and processing stages. During these stages, the pulp is treated and mixed with water to create a fiber suspension. This suspension is then fed into the paper machines equipped with Visco NIP technology. The Visco NIP technology utilized by the factory is characterized by a flexible liquid-filled press body. This unique feature allows the press to adapt to the shape of the Yankee dryer shell, ensuring uniform pressure distribution across the machine direction. The press body's flexibility enables it to follow the contours of the dryer shell, providing consistent and efficient pressing throughout the paper production process. The pressing stage is critical in tissue paper production as it removes water from the fiber suspension, facilitating the formation of the paper sheet. The Visco NIP press applies the necessary pressure to squeeze out the water and create a uniform and well-pressed sheet. By achieving optimal press dryness levels, the factory can significantly reduce energy consumption during the subsequent drying stage. Furthermore, this technology enables the factory to have better control over the nip pressure curves. These curves can be adjusted quickly and easily to meet different product requirements. The company operates tri-generation facilities where electricity is generated using natural gas through gas turbines. The exhaust heat from these turbines is utilized in paper drying, steam and hot water production, heating the facilities in winter, and cooling electrical rooms and offices in summer.
To further enhance energy efficiency and reduce CO2 emissions, Actool Kajit employs Redry and Shoe Press technologies in its paper machines. Redry technology involves reusing waste heat to increase the dryness of the wet paper, thereby reducing the energy required for drying. This is gold sponge being put into a crucible. Now this crucible is going to go into the furnace and the gold sponge is going to melt and we're going to pour out a pure gold bar. Now we're going to put this crucible in the furnace. This is a gas-fired furnace, gas and forced air. And this furnace is burning at about 2,000 degrees, between 1,800 and 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this is going to take about probably about 15 minutes for that to become completely molten and ready to pour. So this is our gold bar getting ready to be poured. Jesse has opened up the furnace. He's going to grab the crucible with the tongs. Very hot. And inside is all the molten gold. And he's going to pour it right into this graphite bar mold. And there we have a red-hot, pure gold bar. We're going to let it cool for a second, and we're going to tip it out of the bar mold. Solid gold. Moroske Kavarni, A.S. In Jilava is a renowned commercial forge specializing in the production of dye forgings using hot-formed steel. Their advanced equipment and forging techniques make them a leader in the industry. The forge is equipped with cutting-edge technology, including powerful spindle presses ranging from 1,000 to 4,200 tons, and robust crank presses with capacities between 1,000 and 2,500 tons. The use of induction heating for material heating sets them apart from traditional methods. Moroske Kavarni has mastered the forging of ferritic perlitic steels, allowing them to work with materials that can be hardened directly from the forging temperature. Another technique involves controlled cooling from the hot forming temperature, as seen with the C45 by steel. Recognizing the importance of precision and quality, the facility has integrated modern automation elements, such as AB robots and manipulators, into their forging lines. This investment ensures stable production processes and enhances the overall quality of their forgings. They employ various measures to ensure the excellence of their products, including using a 3D measuring machine for accurate measurements, conducting comprehensive crack control inspections, performing hardness checks, and employing spectral analysis to assess steel quality.